Brilliant. Hey, so Sebastian from the Metal Gods Meltdown, and this evening I am joined by. I'm Kyle. And I'm Paul. And together we are Pathos and Logos. Excellent. So we've already sort of answered my question, but why are you named Pathos and Logos? Well, uh, the, there's a lot of different interpretations of the words themselves. If you, they're Greek words, you could uh, interpret them directly from the Greek or in the context of a rhetorical triangle. But the way that we think of it is pathos and logos essentially meaning emotion and logic, uh, because we feel that that best exemplifies what our music is. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. And it is emotional, isn't it? I mean, for people that haven't heard it yet, what can people expect from cults? Uh, people can definitely expect a melodic driven instrumental record that is more on the heavy side. I know people uh, in the heavy metal genres or in the heavy metal worlds hear the word melody and they tend to go yeah, and get scared like a vampire would from the sun. Yeah. But in this particular instance, because we don't have a singer, we rely on melody to get vocal lines across that aren't actually there. Um, mm -hmm. But in reality, the underlying music is actually very heavy. Yeah. So if you're a fan of anything, you know, heavy these days, you're going to like the cult. Oh, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. I mean, Index has some vocals on it. I mean, do you intend to eventually have a singer? So funny you would say that. That song, uh, Udex, at the end of the record, that is a weird man, We're just going off the deep end right out of the gate. it. So... Uh, to, to, add, to understand what that vocal section is, uh, that is in a novel language that we created, as a matter of fact. Yeah. That's real, dude. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, man. We have an entire like, network and concept of kind of self-styled occult stuff that we've been working on, that we worked into the recording. And uh -huh. it's really, it's almost like the cult record is supposed to play out sort of like a ritual. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And uh, so that song, th those words are essentially just like a, a triumphant announcement of power in a, right. in a novel language. So there might be more appearances of stuff like that. But yeah. as for having a singer, Kyle and I have been in several projects together and they always either freeze or collapse. So yeah. we arrived at the duo format. I uh -huh. have a tough time envisioning getting a singer because uh, it's just a hell of a lot easier to get stuff done when you only have to clear stuff with one guy. Hey, yeah. Kyle, want to go play in Canada? Yes, I do. And that's how you make We're going to Canada. Now we're going to Canada. It's just that Excellent. Easy. Yeah, so. So, I mean, obviously you've um, go on to the occult side of things. Are you fans of Alistair Crowley and his writings? Uh, I have read about him. I've read some of his stuff. You know what, Sam? Actually, I'm glad that you brought that up. Mm -hmm. So we do obviously have kind of the occult leading, but mm -hmm. one thing that I want to make very clear is that everything that we have done with regard to that, we have, uh, of course, I don't have the book with me. Of course today. not today. Yeah. We have, a, but uh, 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 books full of the language that we created. Uh, all of it has meaning, for symbols and iconography and sigils and stuff. And there's uh -huh. actually a relationship between the material in these books that we've created and the music that we write. The important thing that I want to bring across here is that we didn't like study extant occult sources. It's we didn't like, you know, go and like, you know, tear the library apart and read uh -huh. a million books on it. We literally just kind of from our own inner worlds kind of create the thing on our own. So uh, I am familiar with Crowley. I've looked at some of the stuff, but I'm, I actually, it's strange to say for how much it means to us, I'm not deeply familiar. Okay. And I'll kind of pick up on that. And what I would, I definitely want to uh, reinforce what Paul was saying right there, where it's totally novel to us. It's not derivative from anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, and while we are both familiar with Crowley and other people's writings, uh, I think what I would lean into that is to say <clears throat> there are, there are ideas or ideologies that can be taken from all kinds of ideolo ideologies out there. And I wouldn't say any of them have it perfect, um, but this is what is perfect for us. Right. And that's kind of, I think, the ultimate point. I mean, Kyle, you really touched out on it there. We're big believers in do it your way. You know, yeah. we, we questions about the occult component and what we're doing. People are curious about it. And I think there's a natural human tendency towards that curiosity. Yeah. But if, 
it, with regard to that stuff, if we were going to say that there was a secondary message that we wanted to promote as a band outside of just our music, it uh -huh. would be it would be don't do what we do. What we do is for us. Just yeah. un, we want to be an example for you that you can do your thing. You don't need to ask anybody's permission. You don't mm -hmm. need to know absolutely every single, th every single thing in the world about it to yeah. just carve and forge your own path. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's unique and it's cool. I love it. Um, so what's the feedback been like from media so far to Colts? Have you had much feedback yet or is that still like drip, 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 dripping in? Oh yeah, we've had... Um, We've had a lot of feedback. We've been doing lots of interviews, you know, reviews and stuff like that for yeah. the record. Um, it's been overwhelmingly positive. Yeah. Uh, I think we can say that. I yeah, think that's we, fair to say. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we at this point, uh, I mean, Colt was officially released on the 24th of June, and yeah. we are nearly sold out of our second run on uh -huh. Colt. So we're going to have to start, we're going to have to order the third run already wow. this week. <laughs> um, so it's it's definitely translating very well. Um, what I think is kind of unique is that, uh, and don't take this the wrong way at all, I'm not saying this is necessarily directed at you, but I do find it interesting that we've been getting a lot more questions about the occult stuff and the artwork more so than we have the music this time around, which is yeah. kind of interesting. That's perfectly fine. That's that's great. We, we love it, actually. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it is, it's a fun thing for us because that... It, it reinforces the idea that we created what we wanted to create. Uh -huh. We wanted it to be kind of a multimedia layered experience, uh -huh. you know, and I'm not sure that all bands do. Everybody you know, uh, wants their creativity to have depth and stuff, but uh -huh. Kyle and I had an unusually protracted period of research and development for this, mm -hmm. both in the form of taking the songs out on the road and kind of vetting them for a year before yeah. we actually produce the record up to uh, and including also just all the bands that we were in before you know there's certain elements musically of stuff that we had done in previous projects that we feel like now that we're past those logos they've uh -huh. almost reached a level of refinement that, that we will be always able to put our best foot forward mm -hmm. excellent so talking about hitting the road have you been or are you going to be on tour and are there hopes to get over the pond Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that would be fantastic. We, we were there was some brief talks about that earlier um, on in the tour season for us this year. Um, but I'm definitely not going to say no to that. Oh, yeah. That's actually that's I mean, you know, I would call that personally a major goal. Yeah. Yeah. Up until up until recently, we had been doing all the booking and stuff ourselves. Um, just retaining as much self agency as possible as long mm. as we can. Um, but uh, up, so up until recently, we just started working with a booking agent. So that should make things easier as far as getting across the, the pond, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but cool. I mean, we've been all over the U.S. You know, yeah. this year alone. Um, yeah, it's still a lot more to come. I mean, we get to announce more shows just on Tuesday. So. That's right. That's epic. That's epic. Okay, then. So when did you first realize you had such a talent for music? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, and it's a specific question yeah. because I feel like implicit in the question is the ability to say to oneself, I am good at what I am doing. Yeah. And that's that's hard to pin down. You know, like yeah. uh, uh, you, you, you played a bunch of bands and I think really it starts with positive feedback from people, mm -hmm. you know. You, you, you spend so much time with your instrument and you're working hard at it and... Uh, you, there's a certain amount, particularly with the music that we play. You know, anybody who's familiar with the metal genre, you know, uh, you know, you you know that sort of the, the basic time for a rock mm -hmm. band, you know, might be a kind of a straightforward four on the floor type beat. But there's metal bands out there where the basic time for the music is yeah. like speed picking at 250 yeah. beats a minute, blast beats and double bass all over the place. So the entry fee for getting into metal is high. Yeah. So you spend a lot of time kind of in isolation yeah. and you have to go out there, you play in bands and you start to get positive feedback and, uh, and say, you know what, maybe I don't suck at this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to expand on what Paul's talking about though, I remember personally thinking at a young age, I, I uh, found great joy in finding bands before they yeah. had really exploded. 
um, yeah. and then really kind of clinging on to those bands. And then once they would explode, I found great personal pride in that, you know, uh -huh. even as like a old kid. And so I know Paul and I have talked about that quite a bit. I, I think for me, that was even before I was playing an instrument. Uh -huh. So I think at that point, I, I maybe got the uh, hip to the idea that, hey, maybe I would be good in this industry, whether I'm playing or not. Uh -huh. And then from there, it was more focused to like, oh, you know, I, I saw a white zombie video for more human than human. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> It, it speaks to the power of community, you know what I mean? That, like, to realize yeah. that you have an attitude for something, it speaks to the power of community. Because if you're just in your bedroom shredding, work, working stuff out, whatever it is that you're doing, you know, uh, shredding or not shredding, mm -hmm. uh, you don't really have a sense for your capability until you go out and you share it with other people and they tell you what they have to say. Absolutely, that's brilliant, man. Okay, then, so the next one, the choice between a long career or a short-lived career, which one would fame and fortune, which one would you choose? Hmm, that's a good one. We've actually discussed this quite a, quite a bit, haven't we? Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. Should, uh, take it away, Sam. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we've actually discussed this quite a bit, um, oddly enough, but uh, we've discussed bands like the police, for example, is the example. That's the first example I'm going to go to. And the police exited when they were on top, right? They did. And they've gone on, all the members of that band, whether it be Sting, Stuart Copeland, they, they've gone on to do, even Andy Summers, gone on to do great things since yeah. then in their own right. But I guess the idea of calling it at the peak of what you're doing, being able to recognize that, hey, we're it's not going to get any better for us at this point. Let's go ahead and walk away so you don't tarnish the name um, mm -hmm. is important to us, both yeah, of us, yeah. actually. So um, you are not going to see Paul and I <clears throat> performing in pathos and logos and into our 70s. You're just not going to yeah, see Yeah, that's this. <laughs> And, and, and it's, I understand that there are certain artists, many artists, where it becomes your life, you don't mm -hmm. know what else to do, it's the only thing that you know, <clears throat> but we <clears throat> very strongly feel that there's a danger when you go too long of almost becoming a shitty tribute band of yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. We, we recently were, we heard the Rolling Stones referred to as... Oh, the Antique Roadshow. <laughs> we don't want to be referred yeah. to as the Antique Roadshow. And, right? and you can't subtract from their iconic status. Absolutely They not. can do whatever they want. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, there's, there's merit to the idea of reaching whatever pinnacle you're going to reach. And mm -hmm. then uh, being aware of that moment, yeah. you know, and then just kind of leaving, as Kyle explained, sort of an unblemished, unblemished uh, moment in time. Mm -hmm. right. Or even like Floyd Mayweather. Floyd May Mayweather goes out, and out right? right, recognizing he's at the top of his game, doesn't want to tarnish his record. And I mean, look, I mean, he's gone down in the history books as one of the best at this point. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, in a way, I mean, I grew up like when Motley Crue were just getting big, Wasp were getting big and all of this lot, um, and it, these bands are still going, and I don't really want to go and see them, but it's a bit depressing when you think who's going to replace them. So it's a bit, you know. That's you know, another interesting topic. Paul and, I, Paul and I have talked about that quite a bit as well, because, yeah. you know, we're all human, right? We're not yeah. AI yet. <laughs> and no, no. so, and unfortunately, as humans, we all have a shelf life, right? Yeah. So bands inherently just have a shelf life, even right. artist bands. What? And so we talk about it like, you know, it's unfortunate what went on recently uh, with Trevor from the Black Dolly murder. Uh, but yeah. we've discussed, like, who is going to fill that gap now? What's going to happen with Etfield from Metallica. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, I mean. Did he not have a breakdown not so long ago, didn't he? He sort of had a breakdown, didn't he, on stage not so long ago, I think. It, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I, actually, I think that's uh, one of the reasons why Paul and I were talking about it in the car, you know, heading back yeah. and forth to a, a gig or something like that. Yeah. Is Yeah, he had a, break, a little bit of a breakdown on stage. It just goes to show you, like, Hetfield's a human. You know, yeah. He's not, not 25 years old anymore. No, no, no. Not, uh, he's not screaming, kill them all into his 70s. There's no. got to be other bands to replace them. So, I mean, no. nowadays, I see bands like 
you know, Lamb of God does very, very well, but um, you got to also remember Lamb of God entered their musical career somewhat late compared to yeah. what other bands would. Yeah. And so they're in kind of their twilight era yeah. as well. You know, yeah. um, there's been uh, interviews out with Morgan Rose from Seven Dust. And he's talking about how Seven Dust has a shelf life. You're not going to be seeing she Seven Dust forever. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I see bands like Lorna Shore coming up. Lorna Shore is huge here in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, I heard that they're going to be taking the baton and running with it. Um, you know, bands like Trivium, I think, will definitely end up filling that spot. You know, yeah. Matt Heafy definitely carved a niche for himself already. Oh, sure. Uh, whether performing in Trivium or not. Um, I could see, uh, I'm blanking out on Ola England's band right now. Oh, uh, not At The Gates. At The Gates, yeah. yeah. At The Gates yeah. has had a bit of, kind of a resurgence, too. They're coming yeah. around right at the right time, you know, to yeah, yeah. fill that spot. So, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Only time will tell, I guess they say. Absolutely. Yeah. can agree more. Okay, then. So, obviously, you've recently released the EP. What's the plans next? Is it going to be an album? Have you already got material written? I mean, I know it's like only a short time, but what's the plans? Oh, for, no, for, for, the, for the next recording? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we've definitely got stuff in the works. Uh, yeah. It's, it's fun functioning as a modern band. You know, yeah. Kyle you mentioned Lamb of God breaking in later in the game. Kyle and I are not spring chickens, you know, and uh, <laughs> we're trying to oh, my. forward. <laughs> Things are moving forward for us now, but... Uh, it's, it's an interesting pace to keep uh, because we have, you know, that you want to do things in a modern way and up to and including the cult. Well, we invented an album format for that. We call it a codex and it's uh -huh. modeled after arrow card format. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of stuff to keep pace with. And it, it almost feels sometimes like writing new material, even though you're a band, it's literally yeah. what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Sort of end up on the bottom rung, you know, and uh, so I, I could say with confidence that we have because the layers are important for us, making sure that we're vesting everything. I mean, everything on the cult record has meaning. The the names of the songs, the keys that we yeah. chose, have a special significance. So that sort of layering process for the the next recording has begun. Mm -hmm. Absolutely has. Yeah, so. it's it's certainly begun. Paul and I have always worked pretty quickly honestly yeah. um as far as writing songs and getting mm. them from start to finish uh in a start to finish format relatively get relatively fast yeah um we, we self-produce everything um and both both paul and i write so by the time it comes to put songs together we usually have songs that are mostly you know 80 percent done already and so it's just kind of like hey dude do you think this is cool yeah, man yeah this is cool and right, <laughs> right on and because there's only two of us it's it's actually much easier to move forward very uh -huh. quickly. Yep. It's reasonably streamlined by this point. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I tell, I used to tell people all the time, if you put Paul and I in a room with a studio and any instrument we need, I mean, we'll churn out five songs in a day. Yeah. It's goes pretty really fast. It goes pretty quick. Yeah. Okay. So then the next thing is tell me about your YouTube channel. Um, how does that go? Um, do you have lots of hits? Do you have, is it hard to get subscribers? I'm asking for oh, myself, actually. <laughs> sure, yeah, that's, that's a fantastic question. Um, one, that's another one that Paul and I have discussed quite a bit, actually. So, um, you know, the YouTube channel has been a, a really great thing for us. It allows us to kind of express our personalities beyond just the music because uh, in today's modern metal world, you almost have to have – it's, it's almost like going back to the 80s. You have to have a look and a personality yeah. and almost shtick, you know. So, it's, it's really – it rounds it out. It's a more holistic approach. It's almost like the the concept of uh, the entertainer back in the day, like yeah. actors dance and sing and do all yeah. this stuff. It's almost kind of a modern iteration of that. There's a lot of stuff you have to produce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the YouTube channel has really helped us out in that regard. Um, uh, I'd be lying to you if I told you it was easy to like get you know subscribers and stuff on there. No. <laughs> um, but we just. We just kind of let it like let it happen organically, and yeah. uh, what we've really come to find is, as long as you're producing quality content consistently, um, the fans will come. I agree. And so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sure you're finding kind of the yeah. similar situation. 
Um, yeah. For us, the decision kind of boiled down to, though, we we noticed, like, at shows, we'd have a lot of people at the shows, and they, they like to watch the show, right? Yeah. But uh, once we'd get to the merch booth, we would spend so much time at the merch booth talking with fans. Yeah. Um, because Paul and I love doing it, that we our, our voices would go out every yeah. single night. Yeah. So we got to think like it's it's a personality thing, it's an experience thing. It's not just mm. the music. People yeah. want to talk to us and hear yeah. what we got to say and all the stupid shit that we have to say. Well, you want to hear what they they just sat and watched yeah. our set. You know, want to come up and talk to us? We're trying to yeah. talk to you. Yeah, you know. And so the YouTube channel just lends that extra medium yeah. for us to you know bullshit about this or that and the other yeah. thing, and then interact with fans and see yeah. what they think too. See, I, so I, never the video I never used to do the video interviews. I never used to do the video interviews. There's my now very much ex-girlfriend. That's another story. Anyway, um, it was her idea. And, of course, I've interviewed, like, Trivium and all that lot in the past. And I didn't do a video. And now I'm thinking, shit, I should have done that. Um, it is hard to get the numbers. It is hard to get subscribers. But it do, they seem to come in, like, stages. But I'm only, like, redoing really it, like, a couple of months, really. Um, but I find it frustrating when there's a guy in the UK, big, big guy, massive he goes around all the takeaways around the country he's got fifty thousand followers like how why it's so <laughs> frustrating when you put your time and effort into doing an interview like this and it's like but you're just going to a takeaway eating the food fifty thousand. <laughs> you, know, you really hit the nail on the head so, i mean it's just the way the internet works you know yeah like heavy metal music you know i you know, has developed so much you know, it's not just, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of fucking killer bands out there that are just fast and loud and killing it, but it's, it's evolved, there's a level of sophistication to it now, even in extremely heavy bands, like brutally heavy bands, a lot of musicians have training, they got a lot of concept going into the way that they're writing the music, and so it is, it's true, it's like, you know, you, you put up like a playthrough video of your song, yeah, yeah and it's, it's, you get like a, you know, uh, a reaction that might be somewhere south of what you would have preferred. And you, you're going down a YouTube rabbit hole and there's like a 10 second video of an adorable cat. Oh. I think the cat is adorable, but it's <laughs> somehow that video ends up with 50 million views. You know, know, and meanwhile you're like, I practiced for six months to be able to play this song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the way that people choose to spend their time on the internet is can can feel challenging sometimes. Yeah. So you are actually both touching down on something that I find interesting, and I I dig into this quite a bit. And and I think a lot of bands have trouble doing this, and in after because they have trouble identifying who their actual fans are, yeah. it becomes difficult to find success. So a lot of bands will say, like for us, for example, a lot of people will say, well, you guys sound like animals as leaders. But the fact of the matter is, not all Animals as Leaders fans are going to like Pathos and Love Gas. No. And it's really hard to identify what your key fan is into because their interests are going to be so broad these days. Yeah. So, I mean, when we do, we'll do like ads for shows, for example, in places that we've never been to, and we'll randomly guess these We'll try hip hop artists, we'll try heavy metal artists, we'll try rock artists, we'll try mm. Taylor Swift. And I'm always surprised because we can never guess yeah. which one is going to be the best one. Never. <laughs> yeah, like, Crazy. never. You like, if you like so and so, you like, like Pathos and Logos. Yeah, and that is, and like, artists that have nothing to do with metal. Mm -hmm. You know, you're trying to promote yourself, you put these ads out. It's, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's this weird game of internet whack-a-hole where yeah, you can basically. just tell. Yeah, but yeah. it just goes it goes to show you that it's it's not as easy as just saying like we sound like Megadeth. If you sound if you like Megadeth, you'll love us too. That's not the case anymore. Yeah, they have to like also sound like Megadeth, and then what do you look like? What do you like? What's your personality is like? Yeah, do you yeah. like people on your pizza? Do you like kittens or do you like dogs? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, all yeah. of that stuff matters these days. It's yeah. wild. Because everybody has access to everything. The internet created yeah. this sort of wild, just, uh, the, the pool's gotten a lot bigger. That's for sure. Absolutely. Everybody's can agree more. All right, and now this is a question my Belgian friend insists I ask, right? 
So I've had a few weird responses to this one. So if you were a musical instrument, what would you be? Hmm. If I was a musical instrument, what would I be? I guess I'm going to go with the double entendre. I would be a, a drum so I get banged all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Cool. <laughs> I'll I'll go with like the gory like death metal one. If I were going to be a musical instrument, <clears throat> I would be human vocal cords. I would just be the meat in a person's neck <laughs> that Excellent. produces a song. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Um, I've had flute before. We just don't want to go down that one. Anyway, um, <laughs> Kenny, <laughs> she, he said as long as it's a girl blowing me. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Can you give us four words to describe Paphos and Logos? Wow, four words. Four, so in four words. Okay. I would say energetic, driven, artistic, and uh, melodic. Melodic. Excellent. Love it. Okay, the next one. If you're stuck in quarantine for a week, which band or musician would you have with you? Just almost like a desert island situation. Yeah, kind of. yeah sort of, yeah. Okay, got you. So, like, which band or, like, which album would I have? Which you? band or musician would you have with you, dead or alive? Sorry, I didn't oh. say that. Okay, and let's rule out each other, I guess. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I would, man, you know, I'd have a blast with, I think I'd have a blast with Dimebag Daryl. You know, we'd probably party until we drown the ocean or something like that. <laughs> Brilliant. Are you tired? Like, what happened? Uh, you know what? If I could have anybody that I'd be and hang out with them, I would probably go for that singer from the 50s and 60s, Jackie Wilson. Okay. I would hang out with Jackie Wilson, dude. That's and different. I would have uh, just sing to me the entire time. <laughs> there you go. That's different. Love it. All right. So it's a quick. Just, okay. just repeat over and over again. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So it's a quick fire round now. So it's five questions. Yeah. Either or either. So the first one vinyl or digital? Vinyl. I'll, I'm going vinyl as well. Yeah. Excellent. Small, intimate gig or festival? Uh, I mean, that's a tough uh, yeah. festival. Yeah, festival. Yeah. Okay. Denim or leather? I'm a denim guy. Denim. Yeah. Okay. Saint or sinner? Sinner, bud. Straight up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Last one's important. Joe Biden or Kermit the Frog? <laughs> Kermit the fucking frog. A pool of standing water. <laughs> excellent i want to thank you so much for your time today um do you have any final words for your fans our viewers and listeners uh yeah you know if you guys have a good time like here definitely check us out at www.pathosandlogos.com uh from there you can order your codex or check out uh, our tour dates Check out our cool artwork um, and also check out our YouTube page. And outside of that, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Cheers.